So g'day, how you going? So today I'm in Warrandyte and if you look at the actual rock, show a close up in the middle. Uh, this has actually got quite a lot of quartz bearing rounded quartz. So this indicates that this used to be uh, probably a river, a deep lead river. And in this area, they actually mine for gold. So, if you come here, uh, there's no mining at the moment. All this is actually residential. I'm actually in Warrandyte State Park. And if uh, you come here, this, I think this is called the Black Flats area. You can see there's actually lots of holes in the actual ground. So, I'll show you. So here we actually have a hole, so if we go down, we can actually go down, so if I go eye level, that's actually ground level, and there's actually holes, so this actually used to be uh, a digging, I'm not too sure how deep it was, it probably was, went down a fair way, and if you go to the actual side, you can see that there's actually lots of quartz pebbles, so these are all rounded indicating that this was deposited by a river, these have all been rounded by in the river, so how they actually get rounded is that when they're actually floating in the river, they actually bang onto each other. And every time they bang onto each other they round a little bit. So take a bit of the actual quartz off and it keeps rounding. So if you keep on going like that, just pretend my hands are water, chucking these around, and that's how these actually get rounded in the water. They get banged up against each other. This has probably all been dug out of the actual rock itself. So the actual rock here is about 400 million years old. So that's not where they're actually looking for gold from. So here we have a lot more quartz. So it's a hell of a lot of quartz. And in between we actually got some uh, sandstones. So I've got more sandstone here. So that's the actual quartz. Here's the actual sandstone. Generally the quartz comes up through fissures, so cracks in the rock. And then you actually got quartz that actually comes up from uh, water that's actually been heated by a pluton. Because not too far from here, towards the actual west, we have the western volcanic. So it probably could have been there, or it could have been a lot earlier. And it's also bringing gold up with the actual quartz. And that has gone through the cracks and it's actually solidified. Forming quartz and gold. Then later on it's been eroded. Been uh, taken down a river. And it's been deposited in areas like this. So you can actually see there's a dip just there. It's actually quite a lot. And... There's a hell of a lot of quartz here. I don't see any gold. So, you probably find some gold in that quartz. But a lot of it's probably been mined out. So if you actually have a metal detector, you can probably search for gold. Not only that, because this is, I think it's like 1880s, 1850s, 1880s. You can probably find a lot of archaeological objects, probably also old coins, British coins, I say. Probably not sovereigns, because these people were actually quite poor. Probably bronze coins and silver. And you can see some of the rocks actually broken. So, that's actually quite nice. I might take that. And if you have a look, yeah, it's just all over the place. You've got a large quartz pebble. And here's the actual walking track. So you can actually walk down that way. Walk up that way. Anyway. So basically, this is whereabouts the actual whole gold diggings are. So the gold diggings all around Warrandyte. But if you go to Warrandyte, you can see this island, you get past that, but you need to come down here, Teals Drive. 
So you need to drive up there. Go to the driving all. This is actually pretty much uh, farmland or used to be farmland. Uh, this used to be so denuded in the 1850s to 1880s. All that vegetation was actually gone. It was actually bare. All of it was dug up. So it actually took quite a few years to actually get up. So you go past Kemler College and see that junction there. You can't actually drive up that road, but you park right there. There's a car park there. And then you go up the tracks, so you can see the dirt tracks there. And if you go up here, the diggings are about there. So that's basically where the diggings are. And if you have a look, it doesn't it just shows you as the forest. But it's quite clear from the tracks that there are actually a lot of uh mines so I'll pause a bit so here we actually have that map so this is this maps from i can't uh, probably 1970s or 80s and you got the black swan yeah i don't like that every time you actually move this pdf it actually needs to recalibrate and you see those black squares there they're the former mines but they've all been filled in and they're just pretty much people's homes now. And we felt like they have great big gardens. So, in this area, in the centre. And you see you've got the green. So that's the actual Quaternary River Alluvium. So that's pretty recent. And then you've got the SLA, Silurian Late. And I'm not too sure what sedimentary rock i'm not too sure we'll have a look in a minute so it just shows you that there's actually just the actual silurian rock so maybe the quartz bearing rocks are actually came up through the actual silurian rock and but as you see there it's all been eroded so obviously it's been eroded out and rounded by river action and that's on top of the actual Silurian rock, but they haven't actually shown it here. So it's probably Quaternary. And if you look up uh, Gold in Victoria, you'll probably find more information. And I endeavour to actually do that in the future. So, let's have a look at SLA. So as you can see, SLA is a siltstone, massive, with localised groups of massive laminated and current bedded grey wax so it's uh, just siltstone doesn't show anything about the actual uh, rock and you got silurian it's Wenlockian to Ludvonian Anderson Creek so that's what the A means Anderson Creek formation so S silurian L for late A for Anderson Creek formation that's why you got SUD Silurian, Upper, and the Dargoal Formation. So there's no other information about uh, gold bearing rocks. If you want to go up there, you probably have to go up here. So, sand deposits, gravel, gravel, any of them say gold. Olivine basalt, so that's a. Oh, what a oh, igneous rock, olivine, cell gravel, quartz diorite, quartz and felsa porphyry. So, there's no information about any gold bearing rocks. Fifth bedded siltstone and quartzite. No, so I'm not too sure where the actual uh, gold have actually come from. That's going to be for another video. So, I hope this helps you with. Uh, Determining the actual gold deposit. So anyway, uh, here I am at the Yarra River, and we're talking about the quartz deposits that actually are formed. It was just right behind, right in front of me, probably about 300 meters, and uh, that wouldn't be formed here because this is actually too fast. It actually take the quartz all the way down. There's actually a lot deeper tributaries, uh, not tributaries, it's a lot deeper parts, so 
Like if we look over here, you can see that the actual river is actually quite quiet over there. Here we have a shallow part. Over there we have a deep part. So uh, I said that generally they don't form, but this is a scenario. So here the rocks will be rounded but transported down river. So if you've got another rapids up there that's transporting the rock down, over here the actual those rocks, the pebbles, will actually be deposited in the actual deep part of the actual river. So that is why it's quiet, because it's actually quite deep. And over time, if the river actually changes course, then it actually dry up and be infilled with uh, sediment from the actual banks that's actually coming down the banks and filling up the actual river as well. So that is the scenario that we have up that way. So in front of me, so the river has deposited the actual gold and quartz in the river and it's actually stopped flowing and it has, oh sorry, and it has actually filled up with sediment. So it looks, actually looks quite shallow so I reckon it's been eroded for quite some time and probably a few meters have been taken off that actual rock up in the hills and because it's actually up in the actual hills it's actually high up it's probably about 200 meters higher than what I am so that river former river system is actually quite old so it might have actually been the former Yarra River, so this river here, former Yarra, but this has actually been eroded a lot longer, I don't know, a lot recent, so this is more recent here, and up there it actually might have been the old part of the Yarra River, or it actually might have been a tributary, that's what I said before, tributary, so a, a creek that actually come off the Yarra River, put water into the Yarra River, and that's what actually dig bleeds a lot of a lot of them actually come into the Yarra River or even the Murray River. So they're actually a lot smaller. So this part is where the erosion takes place. That is generally where deposition takes place, a lot quieter places. So I hope this actually wasn't confusing and I hope this helps you with uh, actual gold deposits. So if you're going to find gold, make sure you see if there's actually quartz in the place first. Here, there's no quartz here. This is all just mudstone, siltstone. And, yeah, a lot of the sediment, I don't, I don't see any quartz here anyway. So yeah, one well, quartz, you have to go up there. There might be gold. I'd say there probably still is. You know, there were no metal detectors back in the 1800s. So a lot of that stuff would have been actually missed. Wow, oh, it's such a beautiful day today. Nice, beautiful day. Anyway, thank you for watching my video and I hope you learn a little bit about geology.